Welcome to the What's Your Weird Story podcast. Everyone has at least one good story. And some of us have stories that are just to the left of normal. We're interested in the ones that push the boundaries of what we can perceive. Stories that defy explanations. Stories with an air of mystery. Stories we might not share. For fear of being thought of differently. But don't worry. We're all friends here. So, what's What's your your weird story? story? Hello, everybody. Welcome to the What's Your Weird Story podcast. I'm your host, Barry, and with me as always, my buddy, Mr. Adam Beebe. How are you, sir? Hey, Barry. How's it going, man? It's going. It's going. Uh, yeah. Happy New Year once again, because we're extending, New Year once again. <laughs> we're extending the your joy for a while. So The more I say that, the more I'll remember what to put on my, when I write my checks. Yeah, know? I've been pretty good so far. 2019. My 2019. <laughs> so, how you how you holding up with your uh, beginning of the year ideas? Oh, completely. Uh, just about. I probably right there with, along with the majority of strong-willed um, and self-determined people, and completely given up on all of them. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the way yeah, it goes. I tried. You know, we'll figure something out. I as mean, we go along. If you haven't figured out by you know the age of uh, forty something how to motivate yourself there's not much hope for you so i mean you know it is what it is at this point but i'll tell you what man i'm just uh we've we got a we got a couple of inches of snow out there on the ground so i'm enjoying that yeah but uh you know because it's uh i still i'm still a, a big kid at heart yeah, in, yeah, general, yeah. in general but definitely when it snows and when i see snow and i man i love it i love it so it's and a perfect also, time of year if it's going to be cold there might as well be something to look at Exactly, you know. Yeah. Although yeah. it's been pretty, it's been pretty warm this winter, uh, comparatively. But we finally uh-huh. got some some nice, beautiful stuff out there. So, well, good. How's every, how's everything down there and uh, back home in Oklahoma? Man? Very good. Uh, you, I think you guys got the snow portion of the rain that we got a couple of days ago. It just rained like crazy. So you probably got that. I'm assuming the same sort of storm. But, uh, yeah, man, things are going good. And speaking of home, we, we've got uh, a return of a, a buddy of ours, Mr. Jeff Hubbard. Uh, do we do indeed. He's coming back to kind of recap Shan's story from last week. And we kind of wanted to get him on because he is our Bigfoot expert. Yeah, we had mentioned that we had tried to get him to be uh, available for when Shan had told his story, but it just the uh, the planets didn't line up that day. So we uh, we set him down, and he thoroughly studied the the uh, the recordings. Uh, he made notes, and he even he even texted me a picture of the notes that he had been making, uh, which he had forgot at the office. <laughs> so just it's a good thing he took a picture. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a good thing he yeah. took a picture. So, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, so we got uh, so Jeff's going to be back here with us today to give us his notes, and we're going to have a conversation about Bigfoot with him uh, about Shan's uh, expert. Since we all grew up in the same town that Shan's talking about, you know, our hometown, so he's got that. So yeah, but not only do we have Mr. Hubbard with us, our Bigfoot expert yes. and voice of the reader, but we also have a, another friend of mine, uh, Sean, who I met here uh, at graduate school, art grad school, and Sean's got a couple of cool ghosty stories yeah, to share. Really and cool. uh, yeah, they're fun. They're a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Sean also is a podcaster. He just started up his his own podcast, uh, Board in the Suburbs, and he's going to tell us a little bit about that as well. And that's a pretty cool, completely different, but very interesting it kind is. of podcast. It is, so. and and you'll hear us talk about it and, you know, support him. Go to his uh, podcast and subscribe to it. I'm sure he has social media that he also mm-hmm. does. Get on there and let him know that we sent you over to him. So, so let's get to it. We got Jeff coming up with his commentary on Shan's big Bigfoot story, and then followed up by Sean. Jeff, thanks for joining us, man. Uh, You've already told us your weird stories, but uh, what's here your commentary? What'd you think? What'd you think? Snoochie boochies, bitches. (laughs) What's up, man? (laughs) Hey, not much. How are you guys doing? Good. All right. Good, good. Good Good to see you again. Yeah, good, man. good, good to see you guys. Yeah. So what'd you? Yeah. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you guys. 
we, we, we've we've uh, decided we could say Happy New Year for a couple more weeks, and then after that, we're done. <laughs> yeah, sounds good to me. It's always a Happy New Year for sure, for sure. So, so what'd you think, man? So, yeah, man, uh, amazing story. Uh, I listened. I think four times. I don't know uh, to to Shan's interview. Uh, uh, you know his voice and the description of the evening and the the coolness and the the dew on the grass and uh, just you know his searching around. I could just see him out there searching around in some dim light on a cold, frosty night. Just freaking out (laughs) so uh anyway yeah thought it was great uh so yeah let's kind of jump into uh maybe discussing a little bit of this have you heard because this is the first time i've heard of anything like this close to uh kingfisher have you heard of anything like that well you know actually uh when when i was doing my initial bigfoot research back in 2005 uh, so is that when you was is that when you first started to really get into this stuff? Yeah, that's it. Two thousand five. Two thousand five. Okay. Yeah. It, okay. And, and it, I was. I, I want an, to do another side note. Sorry for interrupting you there, but um, growing up, um, our listeners may or may not be surprised to hear this. Growing up, I was always the one who was really into the weird stuff, and like you know the monsters and the and comic books and all that weird stuff, and was open about it. Um, and you have always been a very scientific minded person, very, you know, nature minded, stuff like that. How did you arrive at this? I think you may have explained it a little before, but how did you arrive at this in 2005? Well, you know, uh, yeah, I was at, I'd started a new job and, and everything had slowed down and I was, it was right before law school. I think I had about three months before law school. There wasn't anything to do at work, and I don't know. I think I came across a Bigfoot story one day, and I was like, "I'm just, I'm going to get to the bottom of Bigfoot." And so I think I looked at everything on the internet. I'm really I'm an I'm an office chair armchair Bigfoot researcher. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, and you know the the bulk of my research, and uh, you know, I my thesis paper has uh, not been presented to the scientific community yet. <laughs> still working on that. Still, still working yeah. out the flaws. Exactly. Still working. I mean, on that. Take your time, man. You know, you've so, got, uh, you've got, you've got all the time to do that. So. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, I started then. Uh, I can't remember exactly where I was going with that. Uh, <laughs> initially. <laughs> well, you, all right. So you you're working your desk job, and. Yeah. That's what you're saying, and you 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 were about to enter. You had a little time before school started, right? right. <laughs> and then, so and so then, yeah. So get the big foot though. <laughs> got oh yeah, exactly. Okay, I'm back on track now. So I was reading Bigfoot stories all over message boards, you know, and 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 always, you know, when I was doing this research, I'm always looking for local stories. Okay, right. so I come across one to my astonishment. Uh, was a Kingfisher County Bigfoot story. And to make a long story short, I read this story. This guy was turkey hunting with two of his buddies and from, they were around the Cimarron river and across a field, they saw a Bigfoot. And I can't remember the exact details of this Bigfoot, but anyway, uh, one of the kids, and I think it was the kid that was telling the story. uh, His last name was Russell. And, This was a Dover, you know, this is Dover area. So I had our old friend Desi's email address, and I think she was maybe living in Florida at the time. Anyway, I emailed her, and I asked her what her, I didn't even know she had a brother. Uh, But it turns out this was Desi's brother, and I had found found his Bigfoot story on the Internet. Wow. That's small world, man. That is, yeah. That's pretty cool. That's, that's, uh, Wow. And yep. <clears throat> so, what? What? Um, so, was that a uh, an article written, or was it a blog, or something? Or how did you run across something like that? Well, you know, there's a lot of sites out there that will, you know, they will. You can submit 
Bigfoot stories. I got you. Like and, a forum uh, yeah, they're, or something? yeah, yeah. It's like a forum, and they're they're available, you know. And like this one was arranged by state and also by county, and so it was searchable that way. Oh, cool, cool. That's so, very cool. Yeah, yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. So, but that you know, as far as I know, that's the only other Bigfoot story besides Shan that I've that gotcha. I, that I've that I've heard. Cool. So. All right, so now back to Shan's. Okay, uh, so back back to Shan. So, you know, he laid everything out uh, perfectly. I mean, uh, very interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it starts off with uh, scared dogs, which I imagine probably there's a lot of Bigfoot stories that start out that way. Uh, you know, who knows what uh, that family of Bigfoot were up to that night if they were hunting those dogs or uh if they were just on the move yeah uh but you know i mean like you guys discussed uh you know he said the dump was right across the 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 creek Mm -hmm. i've been out there before when i worked for the city of kingfisher we had uh I did, you know, I was a lifeguard. I worked at City Hall. I also worked at the wastewater treatment plant. And we had an area out there, and the, the dump was right across the creek from me, uh, in, an, in an area where I tested, uh, you know, water that we had treated that was flowing back into the creek. And so I saw some interesting things uh, in that dump one time. Uh, I actually saw the dog catcher. Uh, across the creek, dump a animal. I think it was a cat <laughs> out of a cage and execute it. <laughs> well, oh my hey, God, that <laughs> might those kinds of thing might happen in Kingfisher America. Yeah. So that's, that's so true. anyway, very interesting. But yeah, you know that creek is uh, the the embankments are pretty steep right there. You know, I mean yeah. that creek has really cut quite a swath into the countryside right there. Yeah. So and you know. It's wooded on both sides, you know, and, and it, you know, if big feet are terrestrial beings, uh, you know, if they live on Earth, and especially if they live in Oklahoma, uh, the only way they're going to get around is on rivers and creeks yeah. uh, in western Oklahoma, especially. Everything else is a wheat field or a pasture. Uh your rivers and your creeks are going to be big feet highways. Yeah. Right. That's, right. that's where that's they're a, going to track. Right. Good point. Good point. Hey, C- hub, can you explain when you say live on earth, some people might think, well, of course they live on earth. I mean, how else would we see them? But can you explain the sort of different ideas behind, um, where and how Bigfoot um, can be the, the, the idea of where it comes from, you know? So, yeah. I, yeah. I'll tr- I'll try to pull a few uh, a few things. Well, you know the the first one and 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 the idea that I probably thought of Bigfoot as when I when I first began my research was uh, you know Bigfoot as a terrestrial being, an earth dwelling being, you know, just like you know flesh and bone, just a like bi- a biological exactly. natural occurring yeah. organism like us. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so that's that's one theory. Uh, you know, the other another theory is a, there's a supernatural theory, and I think that that theory uh, you know encompasses the ability of Bigfoot to uh, be able to uh, uh, travel interdimensionally. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't know, you know, is that a native? You know, is that the Native American sort of idea? Uh, well, I've heard that, but I could be wrong. Yeah, you know, they, uh, you know, the Native Americans have a lot of their uh, religion and, and other, uh, you know, just the way they explain things. Uh, it's based on almost magic or, you know, supernatural mm-hmm. uh, uh, ideas. Right. Because, you know, they... They had no other way to explain these things, how the sun moved across the sky. I would think that different groups also might have different ideas about, you know, nature and all that stuff. As, as, you know, pre, you know, 
global conquering of Christian Christianity and other massive religions. You know, those pre huge. You know, when we're still you know pagans or whatever kind of universe or universally. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, right. So, yeah. 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 So, uh, and and a third theory, uh, you know, and this is probably one that maybe I am more inclined to uh, to to take part in. Maybe my second favorite theory, as opposed to the terrestrial theory, would be uh, that Bigfoot is an extraterrestrial. And you guys mentioned in Shan's episode, you know that that there are a lot of uh, Bigfoot sightings uh, around the same time and same areas as uh, UFO sightings. Right. And uh, it kind of makes sense. I mean, you know, kind of a Wookie. Yeah. Is that a Wookie? Bigfoot's right. a Wookie. <laughs> yeah. Well, we and we saw a lot of that at the Bigfoot Festival. I think that's the first time that I had ever seen anything that was connecting the two. I never realized that people that that idea was out there that mm-hmm. UFOs and Bigf- Bigfoot sightings were, you know, starting to be lumped into the same thing. I didn't, I didn't know mm-hmm. that until we yeah. saw, you know, those talks and the people that were wearing the, the, <clears throat> the t-shirts with the UFO and the Bigfoot. Mm-hmm. So yeah. mm-hmm. that may be something that people don't understand. They don't, they don't yeah, know that true. exists out there. So that is true. And that's you know, true. and, and and maybe that's the case. Maybe that's an instance of uh, us trying to explain, sure. uh, you know, things we can't understand. So right. we say Bigfoot's coming in on UFOs. I don't, right. I don't know. Right. So, but I think that's probably the the main three. I don't know. There could be some other mm-hmm. outliers out there. And and like I said, it's been a while since I did the bulk of my research so yeah uh, well, and, that's and, all i can think of off the top of my head and all the bigfoot stories that you hear you don't hear a whole lot of like bigfoot families like you know it's usually you see one you know but you don't hear a whole lot at least i haven't heard a whole lot of people uh talk about whole families being seen yeah 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 i, I have read a few stories about bigfoot families there was uh man i I probably should have tried to look this up, but uh, there was a story about it. I think it was a man who was, well, we might've read that story uh, at the Bigfoot festival, you know, I had a couple of uh, Bigfoot books. We read a few stories. Seems like there was a man who, I don't know if he was kidnapped. Yeah, he was kidnapped uh, and held for a, two or three days mm-hmm. by big feet until he finally duped them. And, uh, some way or another, I can't remember exactly what it was, but he escaped Right, and they did not, uh, pursue him. Mm. So he got away. But, uh, yeah, I've heard a few Bigfoot stories. I've, I've, I've heard of, uh, there was one, I remember there was a group of four or five, uh, with some juveniles, uh, that somebody had seen from, you know, quite a distance. They were yeah. walking amongst some trees. Was that the Canadian guy? Was that, that the one that... Because Les that Stroud could be did... right. Les Stroud did that show. I yeah. don't know if you saw that or not, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know he, if I did. He was with one of those dudes, and he was... Uh, they would go up... <clears throat> they were up in the mountains in Canada, mm-hmm. and uh, thick, dense forest, and... They were the guy that he was with, you know, claimed that he had filmed a family and mm. they showed the film toward the end. I think it's been debunked. Um, yeah. But I thought that it was so fascinating, dude, because they kept running across these like fairly large. They weren't they weren't full grown trees, but these were trees that were probably, you know, 15, 20 years old, mm-hmm. um, you know, maybe maybe five inches or so six inches in diameter snapped off at like five six foot that were leaning they were all leaning a certain way and the guy was was talking about how that is a a it's a border that the the big feet are are telling you not to come past this yeah. particular point you know huh um any he, any he, he was he 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 noted that that the snapping wouldn't be from um, snowfall because uh, 
you know, I guess trees that snap in, you know, because of, of heavy snow snap in a certain way. He kept noting that it was a different way that the trees were. It looked like somebody had just taken them and just snapped them, you know, yeah. you know, by hand. But you'd have to yeah. be a huge dude to be right. able to do that. But yeah. I don't know if you ever heard anything like that. But Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've heard a lot about, uh, uh, you know, trees that size being broken off uh, higher, you know, than yeah. and even a man wouldn't be able to do it anyway. Right. Uh, but but higher than a man could reach. And, and not only that, but smaller trees uh, being twisted maybe together. There's yeah, a, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, yeah, yeah. And those are markings, you know. I'm not exactly sure what they're meant. I don't know if it's yeah. uh, a territory thing or if it is a warning yeah. for, you know, other animals or humans or other they're big very, feet. They're very intricate weaving. Right. You would, you would almost think that if they were kind of a warning thing that they could only be for other other bigfoot or for people because animals are, you know they don't really they're this the warnings that an animal puts out um would be something like a smell you know like or yeah. claw marks or something like that mm -hmm. um but, you know, like, if it's something where, you know, not too many creatures, you know, just arbitrarily put tie things together or whatever, you know, they yeah. make kind of structural things. If they do make structural things, it's like a nest, you know, it's right. like a, or something for gathering food. But as far as a warning kind of a thing, that seems like it, that's there's a higher intelligence. That's yes. um, true. And it has to, and a directed thought pattern, I think. Not just a natural true. kind of thing, so that's interesting. I don't know. That just that's a thought that just popped up in my head. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you know, uh, during Shan's story, uh, when he was talking about that one tree that appeared to have been stripped of bark, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, after uh, you know, it was it was clean, as if you know, whatever they stripped off the the red dirt stains from from the flood stained the other trees, but this tree, I'm sure it was, it was white, mm -hmm. uh, after the stained bark was, was stripped off. Yeah. So, I mean, that could be an instance of something and who knows if there's not a territorial scent also that's given, you know, I mean, Bigfoot could have whooped it out and took a piss on that tree. <laughs> uh, so, so who knows, right. who knows exactly. Uh, but yeah, uh, spooky story. You know, I got the I got the chills listening to it, <laughs> and n not only that, uh, the story, but his description of of how crisp and cold the night was, and mm -hmm. uh, we've all seen the grass dewy and frosty, and and uh, you know it's cold whenever whenever that's happening. That's yeah. true. Uh, so I wasn't clear exactly though in his story how many. Uh, you know, I know he saw a female Bigfoot, mm -hmm. and he also saw a what appeared to him to be a male Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, you know, he mentioned that uh, he thought maybe there were some, you know, teenage Bigfoot that right. were uh, causing the mischief around. And uh, I don't, did he ever say if he saw those? I, I want to say that he at least... It seemed like he said there was a there was three, or maybe he thought there was three, but he definitely saw the two, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't remember if uh, I got to go back and listen. It sounded um, like yeah, and it sounded like the yeah. um, the uh, the f the dew that was on the ground, the disturbance on the ground, would have had to have been a fairly large animal to wallow mm -hmm. around and make the kind of imprint that he saw. Yeah, but but I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm not. <clears throat> I think we maybe we should probe him a little bit more about the juvenile. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean. But uh, I guess hindsight, you know. Right. And then that that well, Shan, up, if you're listening, you can uh, shoot us an email and yeah, explain yeah, yeah. that. Tell us, uh, give us an update on the information yeah. and the questions that have been risen here. So, and you know, that kind of brings up uh, another point was. Uh, you know, the disturbances that he noticed in the 
frost on the grass and uh you know uh where maybe one was wallowing around and you know maybe trying to mask its scent or maybe leaving some scent Mm -hmm. you know uh i had a couple of of thoughts about about that and uh you know in the one instance where he said it looked like the bigfoot was you know suckling the moisture off the grass it it kind of made and then it it kind of made me think that you know if if they were hunting uh you know bigfoot is possibly smelling the ground in that area melting mm-hmm. uh you know the frost or the dew uh and and not only that i mean who knows if shan wasn't right in the middle of some kind of bigfoot mating ritual right. uh that that that's, could have been, uh, you know, maybe that Bigfoot was in heat. She, maybe that's where she urinated. Maybe huh? uh, her scent. Point. Maybe he was just meeting up with her. Who kn- who knows? And maybe, uh, th- I mean, there's no telling. You know, I know in the ape world that uh, when male apes, there's a certain species of. I don't know. If, ape may not be the proper term. Uh, because I don't think they're apes. I, I don't know if they're chimps. I don't know if they're orangutans. But, it, you know, it's a... Primate oops. situation. Yeah, a primate, a, a, exactly. Yeah. A primate situation. Uh, where uh, I, I, I saw a video where these male uh, primates would give gifts of food to the females. And then they, I mean, they give them a a bunch of, of whatever they were eating. It was some kind of leafy green. And, uh, then that female would just hop right on him. And wow. it was, you know, he, she repaid the favor right there. Wow. And it was, you know, it was a little bit disgusting because, uh, these primates weren't just after, you know, females in their age bracket. So yeah. it was yeah. customary yeah. for, sure. uh, the primates of all ages. Sure. Well, so and, and uh, you know, I don't know, and that makes sense too because as a <clears throat> as a as a species, you're you're trying to procreate with the most viable ones of the bunch, which would mean mm-hmm. the younger. You know, uh, as you get older in in the primate world, you kind of get shunned because you're no longer the the dude. You know, or yeah. you're no longer you know the fertile woman. Um, you know, those types of things happen and it happens in our own species. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, the difference being that we have the ability to understand that, uh, that does a lot of damage, but in the animal kingdom, <clears throat> that those, those lines are very blurred and they are simply trying to make sure that their species continues. And yeah. so they, you know, over, millennia have figured a way out to make sure that that happens so um that's fascinating because i never really thought about that angle at all and that's that's interesting that you brought that up yeah but who knows and and you know and also like he said you know uh the advantage of having a partner uh for all those things he listed warmth and food and uh just companionship really i mean yeah uh uh, you you would uh, probably stick by and stay close to whoever your mate was. Right. So any any thoughts on the box? Well, the box. That, I, that, I mean, that to me, that's a it's a mystery. It could be related or could not be. Might yeah. be that is just some rubbish down by the uh, you know down by the the river. Yeah, the creek there. So. Yeah, that that could be, it could be totally coincidental. Uh, you know, I mean, if I recall, he seems to say think that it was like it didn't have frost on it, and it was out of place for what would normally be, if I yeah. recall correctly. So yeah, that's true, and that like it was kind of torn up, and uh, you know, he said he thought maybe one of the big feet might have been actually wearing it. Yeah, as a t-shirt. Or something like that. And, I mean, you know, 
I mean, no. I I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a Bigfoot, but uh, you know, maybe. I uh, wish. Uh, I wish that cell phones existed at that time, like they do now. Yeah. yeah. The readily available camera. Yep. Yeah. He would have had it. That's for sure. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, that box, uh, if you did have some younger big feet there, I could see them being playful. Uh, you know, they find a box that's big enough, you know, mess around, put that shit on. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Run around a little bit, you know, maybe it would keep them (laughs) a little bit warmer on a cold night too. I mean, you know, uh, homeless people stuff their jackets with newspapers to keep warm. I, who knows? Maybe Mm -hmm. he put it on, put some leaves in there, whatever. You know, who, who knows? Uh, so it was a, such a very interesting story. Uh, you know, and I did find it kind of interesting that uh, his, you know, his buddy, uh, I couldn't ever quite tell uh, in his story if, you know, his buddy... I don't. Did his buddy? His buddy didn't see the big feet, right? Well, if I recall again, if I recall correctly, um, he, his buddy never said explicitly if he did see anything, but he seemed to have the idea that his friend might have, but just did not want to talk about it, like yeah. ever. Yeah. yeah. Um. You know. So there's that. So it's possible. It seems like maybe, but it, but regardless. His friend just absolutely did not want to say anything. And I think that's a natural reaction. If you saw something that just really uh, just didn't make sense in your brain, that you just don't want to talk about it. Because people do that on all sorts of things. There's all sorts of trauma, traumatic experiences. That people just blank out, wipe out. We, and our brains are very adept at getting rid of that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. And so it may be that his buddy saw something um, and that his brain says, yeah, even if Shan's talking about this, we're not ever, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. That's true. That is true. So, yeah, very interesting. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we can go to the, the glowing eyeballs now. Uh, yeah. That, that he saw, you know, now, uh, he didn't see those, uh, on the female right. Bigfoot. Uh, but I mean, if Bigfoot is supernatural, if Bigfoot is, uh, extraterrestrial, uh, that could be a couple explanations. I mean, who know? you know, if, if, if Bigfoot is an alien, uh, they are, advanced technologically Mm -hmm. uh that could be some kind of google glass bigfoot had on he he was wearing some kind of vision enhancement uh you know glass on his eye uh if he's supernatural those were some glowing ass eyes (laughs) they naturally glow Mm -hmm. and he can turn them on or turn them off and if he was pissed off Mm -hmm. you know or were scared or whatever maybe you know, yeah. I, I don't know. Shan don't seems know. to not think that it was the a reflection off the back of the eyes like you do see with animals yeah. or, you know, especially cats, you, you know, you where know, you catch them right angle and the, the light will reflect off the back of their eye back right. at you. It yeah. illuminates them in a really weird way. Yeah. When, when he first started talking about that, that's that's what I thought. Me too. But that... That almost takes a very direct and pointed light to get that. I mean, I don't think you're going to get that kind of glow from a street light. You know, it doesn't mm-hmm. seem like it would be powerful enough to, you know, penetrate the eye and reflect back off of that, yeah. you know, that coating that you have on the back of your eye that causes that reflection. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a possibility. I don't know how light the, you know how bright the lights were, but you know, and I'm sure he's seen that before. And like you said, he is pretty convinced that he did not think it was that. And I would think in low light situations without a flashlight or a headlight or something like that, you know, pointing directly at that face, I, you know, I would think that 
that that would kind of be an impossibility to see see that. Have you heard stories of uh, glowing eyed Bigfoots before? Uh, you know, I I want to say I have. I want to okay. say I have. I don't remember anything. Uh, you know. Uh, I guess I have too. Now that I'm thinking about it, where people are saying eyes glowed, so I guess that's not entirely uncommon. You know, actually, I think in uh, that awesome little leather-bound Bigfoot sketchbook that you made for me, good buddy, that I keep <laughs> in my safe, by the way. So, and it's fireproof. That's where very important things go. Uh, I think you drew a picture of a Bigfoot with glowing eyes. I I may have. I may have. There's definitely, um, you hear of the Mothman and, you know, he how it had glowing eyes. Mm-hmm. And so, I don't know, there might be some kind of connection or not. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah, but. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I don't know, you know, I... I, I, I'm not. I can't discount anything that he, that he says. Uh, uh, it it seemed, you know, what whatever happened to him happened to him on that night. Uh, well, and, I mean, there's a lot of corroborating evidence. Uh, you know, we haven't even talked about the 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 tracks and the stride length uh, mm-hmm. of of a running Bigfoot and. Uh, you know, uh, right before we got on, you know, I, and, I had and a the, minute or the, two. The, the throat thumps, with the glottaline right, is right, the it. glottaline, yeah. 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 Very I'm trying to do that. Is that working? Yeah. You guys hear yeah, anything? That's, yeah, that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. All right, well. You've got too much beard just, there. I think I have my yeah. beard is a natural <laughs> silence <laughs> muffling thing. So. Well, you know, I, I don't know how Bigfoot was doing that but i guess it was probably all throat there was probably no thump because right. his hair would probably muffle mm-hmm. any kind of thumping as well but that if that is something that they do i mean it'd be kind of ridiculous for bigfoot to be thumping his throat to communicate well, you but, say that but i mean it, it could be it's, something it's, that it's seemingly he, as ridiculous as tree knocking or something or any i mean birds whistling and all that so i mean i don't know i don't think it's too far yeah well i'm not necessarily i'm not saying that he didn't hear that noise but you know the way (laughs) we would think (laughs) we would think it would be done uh i i would i would think he could do it hands free is what i'm saying it could could be it could be you know the african uh languages where they where they exactly yeah. Uh, if you have a, I'm guessing a head as big as large as a, a Bigfoot, uh, it's going to resonate at a much yeah. deeper tone. Doing that something like that. That yeah, is so. probably true. So that that was interesting. Uh, I, I would love to know what kind of communication was. You know, I don't know if that was a warning or uh, a warning to him or a warning to other, you know, members of the the pack. Or family, or pod. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I thought that that was interesting, and I don't know if I've ever really heard of anybody describe a noise quite like that coming mm-hmm. from yeah from Bigfoot. But uh, I don't discount it one bit. I mean, uh, and then the stride length, uh, you know. Uh, I thought was very interesting and that would be wild to be out there, you know, in low light conditions. You're like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to find the the tracks of this, this guy that opened the toolbox, right? I'm going to find it. So you find a track and then you're like, okay, let's, let's track this guy. And you go to, you know, a few feet away where you figure the next track would be and, and there isn't one and you do a circle and expand your radius around that track until you know you find one 15 feet away yep. 12 to 15 feet away uh you know uh i was looking at some stuff just before we got on and and like the average human stride length at a walk is like three and a half feet uh-huh. Uh huh. And they judged, and they they didn't say how tall a Bigfoot uh, of this was that would have like a five and a half uh, foot stride length at a walk. And I didn't, 
I don't know if this article contained anything about uh, you know a human running or a Bigfoot running. It. I I didn't wasn't able to get that far into it, but it seems to me that uh, you know that's a possibility mm -hmm. to have a twelve foot stride length on a creature that is seven or eight feet tall, especially with the power that they've got. I'll bet they can move. Especially and, yeah, if, if they're running, they could definitely get right. a stride that big because right. you know if you're running, your stride is and you're going full blast. Um, and you can run fast, you know, you've got the power to move, then you can cover a lot of ground really quickly. Mm -hmm. Yep. I guarantee you those legs have got a lot of strength and, uh, you know, just to push off and yeah. just almost like, yeah, well, I have I, to, if, if they're that big and, and bulky, then they have to be, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. yeah. So fascinating. Well, it's, yeah. uh, it's a great story nonetheless. Yeah, and like you said, it. like you said, it happened. Whatever happened, uh, definitely happened to him. You know, he 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 still gets super amped up about it. Yeah, and, <clears throat> and it seems like he he can really put himself back in that mm -hmm. moment. And um, it's just a it's an interesting story. Yep, very good story. And I mean, one thing about it when when you see something like that on you know the west side of i-35 in oklahoma uh it, you're not dealing with a bear there's you, you, there's nothing out there that you can mistake mm -hmm. uh for a bigfoot i mean so what he yeah. saw he saw he saw bigfoot yeah he saw at least two yeah at least two uh, so i don't know i thought it was a great story i was on the edge of my seat listening to it and like I said, I listened to it about four times, uh, uh, just taking it all in. So I really enjoyed it. Well, Great thank, story, Shane. Yeah, thank you for coming on and and giving us a little bit of extra eyes on the deal. You know, yeah, we appreciate your insight on the the subject and just uh, chatting with you again about your yeah. favorite subject. <laughs> and, it's always uh, always great to see you, boys. Yeah. Likewise. Cool. Likewise. All right. Well, thanks again, man. We appreciate it. We know you got to go uh, make law. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thanks again, boys. And always great talking to you. And uh, you guys are doing a great job. I love it. I look forward to it every week. Uh, it's 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 one of the highlights of my week. So, oh, thank you, Hub. Uh, we that. really do appreciate it, guys. We'll talk. Keep soon. on keeping on. Okay, right, sounds brother. good. Okay, take care. Barry, what do you think that people find the most far-fetched? Ghost stories or aliens as being the more unbelievable? I would say aliens. You know, I would agree with that probably too. Because I think with ghosts, there's a part of the belief system that is abound throughout the world. And we want to have some kind of assurance of some form of life after death. Mm -hmm. Whereas with aliens, it's unknown for sure. It's mm -hmm. completely unknown. We have only our imagination. We don't have a lot of universal stories that we agree upon that these things exist, maybe. To believe in aliens is to believe that we are not the sole existence of this world, which goes against a lot of belief systems. It definitely does. But you know, the great thing about what we're doing here is we are open to all your stories about ghosts or aliens or anything in between or anything outside of. We're not here to judge. We're here to just talk and to share. And we don't want you to think you're crazy because you're not. And the girl, the babysitter girl, she picked up the phone and there was a policeman on the other side and he said, we've tracked the phone call and it's coming from inside the house. Whoa. Yeah, dude.
dude. I love those urban legend stories. Dude, I do too. And you remember the one where the girl, it's always the babysitter or it's the kids making out in Lover's Lane, but there's the one where the girl comes up and she finds the kids are watching TV and she turns them around and their face has SpaghettiOs. Oh, man. Or the hook guy. Remember the oh, hook the guy? Hook. The hook was hanging from the rear view yeah. mirror. Yeah. Yeah. So if you got a story that is similar to any of those awesome urban legends, we want to hear it. Because, you know, those urban legends, man, they started off as somebody's true life weird story. It's got to be true somewhere. Oh, man, that was pretty amazing that we were able to get Mr. Hubber back and that he was able to sort of shine a light into Mm -hmm. the uh, mythological ideals behind uh, Bigfoot and kind of what that's all about. Yeah, we appreciate you coming on once again, Jeff, and for, you know, having questions that, that we didn't really have you know, pop up, but also having insights into the subject matter to just give us a bit of a further understanding of the possibilities, but also, you know, just in for noticing things that I just completely yeah would just glossed over, you know, and yeah. I get wrapped up. I honestly did. Honestly, I get wrapped up a lot when the people are telling the stories, for sure. our guests are telling the stories. And sometimes I forget to ask questions. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, oh, I wait, mean, I'm a podcaster. Right. This is what I'm supposed to do. Well, this especially, when, <laughs> especially when you're not like a pro in the subject, you know what I'm saying? Because it's yeah. like, yeah. I love listening to Bigfoot stories, but I'm not the guy that's like knows every little thing about it. So I wouldn't think to ask certain questions, you know, but right. But uh, again, I mean, it was a great story and it was just great to to get some thoughts behind that. I think a lot of people don't really understand the different ideas behind Bigfoot because I was always the guy that believed in the sort of physical being of Bigfoot, you know. And I figured that was the only option, (laughs) I I guess. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, yeah, because like, I guess that's a more mainstream idea behind Bigfoot is that it's you know he's the uh the supernatural not supernatural but just a biological entity right that's just really good at hide and seek you know right. um <laughs> but you know but there is a broader version of schools of thought i guess right. is what would be a good right. way to say right. on, on the origin of bigfoot and where he is and what he is yeah. and or they are rather you know, so so it's just really cool to have somebody have a you know Shan, you know, Shan did his research. You can tell, and but you mm-hmm. know Jeff had done on you know a lot a lot of research mm-hmm. on yeah. it, and you know and he gets is you know when he, as he was talking about uh, when he was on with his, with his sister, he gets. He gets kid about it quite a bit from his family and, and a lot of his friends, but uh, yeah. but you know he's passionate about it and he's and he's knowledgeable about it and he takes a very science based approach to it because that's his background. He has a degree um, in biology. He had a degree in biology before he became uh, got his law degree and became a lawyer. So you know, so that's his approach, and that's I appreciate that aspect of it because that's the kind of general idea that i right. take whatever i think about but yeah 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 like for what, sure yeah. and it's fun you know and it's, yeah. there's a there's a fun angle there and and uh so that that's what's great you know i don't think i had heard of that many bigfoot stories personally up until like we started doing these podcasts mm-hmm. on them mm-hmm. and you realize that man that's maybe a little bit more common than what i was giving yeah. credence to you yeah. know yeah well, I, you know, I mean, I would have never thought Oklahoma would be a place for Bigfoot because it's not, I mean, it's in our area, yeah. especially the farm area, yeah. w- because of the landscape, because mm-hmm. it's not a lot of trees. I mean, I would describe whenever I was living out, in the, living in the South, people would ask me what Oklahoma looked like, you know, because it wasn't the same. And I would describe it as this. I was like, okay, imagine you go to, to the beach, right? And you're standing on the beach, and you're right up on the shore where the the waves are coming in. So you're looking out all in front of you, and instead of that, you know, that murky brown water or bluish whatever it is, depending on the ocean that you're looking at, instead of that, that's all green. Yeah. You know? Right. And then you see uh, all the clouds are in the sky because you see it from end to end. You know, and you're looking and you see little boats or whatever out there. Well, those are actually not boats. Those are trees, you know, and or maybe it's and some cattle, (laughs) you know, maybe some cattle. And then you look down the road, you look down to your to your to your left. And instead of being the, you know, the sandy beach, 
it's a it's a road, it's a dirt road, and yeah. it's red. Yeah. And you look down to your right, and it's the exact same thing. Yeah. And you turn around behind you, and it's the exact same thing, except maybe you see a fence and a broken old windmill that nobody's touched since 1937. Yeah. You know, that's the area we grew yeah, up in. Definitely. You're going to see a Bigfoot cut across yeah. a field like that right. because you can see 20 miles away. No kidding. No kidding. So, yeah. That's the truth. And that's what Hub was talking about when yeah. he was talking about that, that their, their highways of nav- navigation would be creeks, rivers, a lot of vegetation. Yeah. But that's you know. where the trees are. They go around those yeah. those creek beds and river beds. Right. So, yeah. Right. Makes all, so much sense. Yeah, it does. <clears throat> it does. And it's, that's, again, great. Uh, having Hub back, and yeah. um, and with that being said, let's move on to our next guest, uh, Sean. Sean also has big feet because he is a big guy, <laughs> and he is uh, he's you know he says a couple of times he's six two. He's taller than that. He's uh-huh. a he's a, he's a much taller. And um, uh, Sean is a friend of mine from uh, our grad school uh, here. I think I mentioned that um, or in the introduction. But Sean's got some really cool stories, um, some really cool spooky stories. So yeah, well, let's just get right into it. So, Sean. Thank you for being on, and what's your weird story? All right, so this is when I was younger. I um, probably was like early 20s. I worked at a nursing home. Um, I just, in the kitchen, I was a a dishwasher. Um, It was a fairly large nursing home, um, and had like numerous um, dining areas. So there was a central kitchen, and off of the dining areas were like smaller prep areas. So part of my duties was to clean them and to stock them with like things like juices or milks for the residents. Um, so one day I was down there cleaning the the like little kitchen area um, with one of the servers, and she was out setting up tablecloths in the dining room. And the room was like, I couldn't see her and she couldn't see me, but I could look out the doorway down this row of, of tables and, and chairs where the resident sat. Um, and this one resident walks in and yeah, I kind of look up and I recognized him because he, you know, like how older people with like a walker, they have like a kind of a hunch and they're probably like a good, like four inches shorter than they normally are. Yeah. 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 Well, it, well, this, yeah I mean, yeah, just because they have aged, a walker. Age yeah. already does that, but hunching over to get that walker. Yeah. I, yeah. I, so he, like, hunched over, was as tall as I am, and I'm 6'2", so, and, but he was, like, like thin. So, like, if you – someone had to, like, portray themselves as, like, the, the tall man or the slender man, that I should say, it would be him. So I'm like, okay, I know who this guy is, and he was a nice guy, and I'm like, I'm like he's going to go sit in his seat. So I finished what I was doing, and I'm walking out to go see what he wanted, and as I'm walking out, I see the the server. She's walking over, and she's like, yeah, you walk past me. And we're, I'm like, oh, okay, I'll, just, I'll, I'll see what he wants, and we look up. And he's nowhere. He's nowhere. So I'm like kind of like just like really kind of worried at this point because residents had a tendency to like leave the building and there was a door back where he right. sat. So I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, OK, listen, I'm like, I'm going to go see if he's outside. If he went outside because it was the middle of winter, I'm like, you might want to have to go get a nurse because like, it, I mean, it's like 10 degrees outside. And this dude, you know, he, he could like be sick or something. So she's like, OK, well, I go to the door and. I don't see any footprints in the snow, but I'm like, well, you know, whatever. Um, so I pushed the door open and like to open the door, I had to put my weight against it and I'm not a small guy. And so like he couldn't, he didn't go outside cause like the door wasn't, wasn't open. So I'm like, well, where the fuck is this guy? And, uh, the, the server, she's like, well, she's like, is he in the linen closet? And so I'm like, oh shit. So there's this linen closet back there too that had like these big industrial like hampers full of like, you know, like tablecloths and stuff. We emptied that room out to the point where we emptied out the hampers themselves. And like the guy was nowhere, right? And we're like, where the fuck is this guy? Right? Because like we both distinctly saw him and we knew both the same guy. So we're like, well, maybe he just like, I don't know, just like slipped past us or whatever. So this was like, we were setting up between, um, lunch and dinner so Mm -hmm. we went back to the central kitchen to kind of start prepping for dinner and as like the trays are coming down they have like each individual's name on it with like their dietary requirements the the manager's like oh you got to pull him out because he died after breakfast and we saw him after lunch what whoa yeah and like uh, like i i'm not a big believer in like ghosts and like but uh, like i saw a ghost that day like what it was, I don't know. 
but like it, it and part of the weirdness of this is that like it it made me just like I'm not afraid or like it wasn't spooky even thinking about it now it's more like confusing because yeah. I saw this thing another human being who was at nowhere near me we weren't even like I, like eyesight of each other saw it too and like we like we, we did an investigation just to find this person who we thought was in trouble or like just like because maybe they're they were starting to lose you know their grip on reality because of alzheimer's or whatever yeah, yeah. this guy had died hours before wow. we saw him did you speak Would to you- your co-worker about that I did because we're sitting, we're in the line, and I look over, and she's like, "What?" And I'm like, "No, seriously." I'm like, did, "I'm like, like what the fuck?" And she's like, "I didn't." I, no, she's like, "Seriously, like I have no idea what's going on." And did, like, wow. And did, I remember bringing it up to like the manager because I'm like, "Listen," and he's like, "No, no, no, no." He thought I was like fucking around. I'm like, "Listen, I'm not fucking around." Like this, like this, I'm not fucking around about someone who just died. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm telling you, I saw this thing, and it, and it's it's like a real thing. And, I, and I'm like, ask, uh, um, I forgot her name, but I'm like, ask her. Like, she was in there. Like, why would we make up this story? It's like, it's no, there's no, there's no reason for this. There's nothing right. for us to do. So, wow, so, man. When yeah. you saw, when you saw, um, when you saw him, did you, did you, did you say any word? Did you talk to him or did you have any kind of like verbal exchange? No, no. Cause like I was clean and I looked up and I saw him walking and like, you know, he had a walker and, and I remember seeing him sit going and, and like sit down at the table. And I'm like, sometimes like residents would walk, walk in and like, they were either bored or like, sometimes they were just like hungry. So I, like, you'd say, Oh, can I get you something or just to see what they wanted. And so I was like, it was probably like 30 seconds of me just finishing what I was doing to go see what he wanted. And like, yeah, like he couldn't have gotten out the way I in that that room because it had no door except the one I walked out of. And like, I mean, like literally, we saw this. So I mean, he didn't actually go anywhere because like he was dead before we saw so him. So you like, and he didn't look like opaque or anything like that. Like no. he looked, he was like a solid figure. Yeah, up until the point like that was part of the weirdness of it because we really, I mean, we were, we thought he went outside. We thought he went in this little closet to hide. Nothing about seeing him made it seem that he was not a real physical human being. Did he, um, did he, did you have any kind of interaction? Did he recognize you when he went to sit down or did he just like, just, this is what he did. You saw him kind of, but no interaction, no acknowledgement. No, he just like, it's like he kind of just went over and sat down in his little, little, little table. He sat by himself at the very end of like this row of tables. And like, I remember like, I, you know, he was a pleasant guy, but you know, I, I, it's not like we were buddies or anything. And I'm, I'm just like, Oh, there's that guy walking in. I'm going to go see what he wants. And you know, um, like, yeah, like I, I don't, yeah, it's, yeah. Like, I don't know what to make of it, but I, like that, like happened that and like is, still to this day. Bizarre. Yeah, I don't know how to, like, wrap my mind around it, because, wow. like, you know, but I will say this, ever since then, I don't like movies about ghosts that are evil, because I'm like, I, I, I can't say I don't believe in ghosts, because, like, I mean, I, that's the only explanation for that. Like, you know, what, what that, what that thing was, what its purpose was, I have no idea. I, wow. I can't speak to it, but, yeah. That's a cool um, story. Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's, I think that's like, I, I wonder when, I, after this, I wonder how many people had actually seen ghosts and just not realized it because it was yeah. so mundane. Right. Yeah. And if it wasn't for that idea, the fact that we knew he died yeah. before we saw yeah. him. Yeah. You know, like people probably see ghosts all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it is, it is entirely possible, man. Yeah. I had yeah. a, uh, uh, an, uh, an aunt of, of mine that passed away. And uh, there was a gentleman who was a police officer that knew her and had came to my family and said, listen, she talked to me. We had a conversation and this was after she was dead. Clearly. I mean, there's there's no way that she was alive. And he was he was just like, I uh, he's like, I, same as you. I don't know how to. Uh, explain it, but we were f- talking, and then yeah. and then he finds out that she's gone. It's just crazy. 
Yeah, yeah. It's just it's. I, and I, like I've, I've t- I remember when I told my wife this story. She was like, "What?" I'm like, "Seriously." I'm like, "You ever hear me talking about ghosts and stuff?" <laughs> right. And she's like, "No, no." I'm like, "I, I, I totally believe it." You know, and wow. it's like, yeah. Wow. So, but I, the, yeah. The only downside of that is like I don't like movies about like poltergeist or anything evil because I'm like I don't that yeah, it can be that can happen. So right. I'm not. Yeah, you it's know, crazy, man. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. So, but after, so I, here's another a little quick story. I used to work at this 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 uh, company that had like a it was a lab with a clean room and like weird stuff would happen there. And I like because I worked there after the nursing home. I uh, that stuff that these things did freak me out because like you would hear someone say your vo- your name if you were in this room by yourself. Like really? it'd be like. Yeah, like the first time it happened, I was sitting there working, and no one was in the room. And I hear Sean, Sean, like right, like right behind my, like someone was fucking with me right behind my head. And like I remember going, and it was a, a clean room, and then there was an antechamber where you would have to put on your lab coat. And outside of that was another area where people worked. And I remember opening the door. And I was pissed off that day because I just got like kind of like like reamed out by a manager. And there's this old guy, uh, Lance. And I'm like, man, are you fucking with me, man? And he's like, no. And I'm like, like seriously, I got shit to do. Like, just don't. Because I thought he was like poking his head in, saying my name. So like, I went back in it, and again, I heard like that kind of like it sounded like a, a young boy or like a girl, but it it, it really sounded like if someone was behind you. And I remember I like I went to the the door again. I'm like, well, just stop fucking with me." And he's like, "Listen." And he was an old military guy. He's like, "Listen." And he was pissed. He's like, "I'm not fucking with you. Just like calm your shit down, man." And he's like, "Come here a second. I'm like, "What?" He's like, and he kind of like like said like, "Is this what you heard?" And he mimicked it. And and I'm like, "Yeah." I'm like, you, "So you're fucking with me?" He's like, "No." He's like, "It's happened to people." Wow. And and like. Yeah, like, and th- that was just like that's like spooky. But like, I remember, yeah. um, he was talking to me, and this older lady who um, worked there came in, and Lance was like, yeah, you know, kind of looked at me and looked at her, and she kind of said like, you know, someone was calling his name, and she's like, okay, yeah, and I believe, and she like, she she never messed with me, you know, she was a nice lady. She's I found I found out yesterday she has p- since passed away. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why I kind of thought of this story. Um, but yeah, like she's like, no, yeah, she's like, I don't say tell people this because one, they think you're a weirdo, but two, it doesn't happen to everyone. But she's like, there's t- days when, like, if you ever notice, like, I'll walk out of that room because I hear shit or I see stuff out of the corner of my eye. And um, I remember, like, one day I got there, like Saturday, it was like early morning, and I'm working because we had to get a whole sh- a shipment out. And you ever like. And what was this? What, what kind of a, a place was this again? It, it, it was a manufacturing plant that made like components for medical devices, oh. and this and this room was a it was a lab that's a clean room. So like they had these like right. you had to wear lab coats and stuff and like hair nets. Um, was, every, and everything was white too. It was like right, you know. Oh, um, and I I was working there, and I I was the only person in the building, and um, and I'm just in that room working, and I felt just sheer terror. To the point where, like, I, I st- like I couldn't move. Right, and I'm, a, I'm a big dude, and I'm like, you know, I'm like, I, and I'm like, I, I, it was just bizarre. And like, finally, I got like the courage. I stood up. I stared at my feet and like shuffled out. And I sat in the other room waiting for like people to come in to work. And I sat in a way so I couldn't actually see through the do- windows and the doors into that clean room. And I was petrified. Wow. Like I felt. You ever, remember when you're a little kid and you think there's something in your closet or on your bed Damn, and yeah. you can't move? Yeah, oh yeah. Dude, like, I got goose I got goosebumps. Like, that's all I'm saying right now. Like twenty five year old, six foot two, and at the time I think I was like like three fifty of so, like not yeah. solid muscle, but like a good solid man, terrified to look over his shoulder in a room he knew where he's by himself. And I remember like the the old lady that I would worked with she came in with another guy and she kind of looked at me and she's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, um, she's like, I'm like, I, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't go in there. I'm sorry. And she's like, do you need to have a cigarette? 
I'm like, yeah, I do. And I just, I just uh, like chain smoked half her pack of cigarettes. Oh my God. And she was like, what happened? I told her and she's like, she's like, yeah, she's like every so often I get that feeling, you know? And she's like, it's not the same thing as hearing someone say that the voice, the voice is like just weird, but she's like, every so often you feel just like sheer terror. And that's like what that is. I don't know. I'm not saying that's a ghost or anything, but like that was just were you a really that was is it, was there any history to this place? I mean, was it an older building or anything? It, I don't. I don't know because it, it was like one of those buildings that they just slap up out in the suburbs because right. someone started a company back in the the 70s or something. Right. Um. So like, was there history there? I don't know. Um. But like, yeah, like. And I remember once t- trying to talk to this other lady we worked with about this, and she was like, "No, no, 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 no," and like she like ran away from me, and like because, like I really think she did experience something, but she just didn't want to talk about it. Wow. Like and, but like the the old lady uh, Audrey, she actually, um, yeah, she would talk about it, and she's like, "Yeah," you know. And after that, I'm like, I don't ever want to come in and work by myself, and she's like, "Don't, don't." Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm not joking. I'm like, you, I, I'd rather not have a job because like it was, it was just, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. You know? And like, and, and the difference is, like I said, like when I saw that, like the ghost that I, I know is a ghost, there's no terror or fear or anything, but like something about working in there. So like what, what it was, I don't know, you know, and I like, I've been, you know, I'm not, I've never been someone who's afraid to be in a house alone. You know, I've been, you know. Yeah, I've worked at places where I was the only at night, the only person in the whole building. Yeah, never felt this amount of fear. You know, wow. I've walked around bad neighborhoods carrying like, like big wads of cash when I used to do, um, just like uh, in, like independent like rug clean and stuff. You know, yeah. and I see yeah. like, you know, <laughs> so um, but yeah, that kind of stuff is like that. It's that kind of stuff that makes me interested in like yeah. the world larger because like, um, you know, I. I've ex- I've experienced things, so I can't write any anyone's experience off. Yeah, right. you know, um, and that's the thing too. Is is that that's the that's kind of the angle that we have found to be true is that no matter what, um, you, if, no matter how you try to explain to somebody what you've seen, if somebody else doesn't hasn't had that experience, hard for them to understand what it is you're trying to say. But people that have had yeah. those experiences, man, that are like, "Hey, I'm not a, I'm not some whack job. Like, I actually am fairly um, resistant to the idea of this. If you experience something like that, it changes everything, you know." Yeah, yeah. and I totally understand why people don't talk about it because, like, I worked like those people I worked with in, in that the manufacturing plant. They had experienced those things numerous times, and I had worked in that room for probably almost a year before I experienced anything. Um, and I know why they didn't say anything to me because I'd be like, what the fuck? You know, a bunch of weirdos yeah. trying to like right. fuck with me. Like, especially if you're uh, saying, Oh, I had this feeling, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Oh, yeah, you had a feeling. Well, you know, yeah. I ate a, like, ate a bad never saw bro. anything. No- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing that was ever moved. You know, it was just like this feeling of sheer terror that like, yeah. I have no idea how but- to describe it. The, your Other body, than sheer terror, yeah. Your your body just out of nowhere typically just does not create the sensation. I mean, the a sheer terror is like that's an underlying thing. You understand yeah. that? You know that? That's not it's a panic fight, attack. Yeah, it's fight that's or not yeah. some yeah. kind of a freak out thing. That's that's very 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 base, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah, and at the time I was living with a buddy of mine who it was this older house, and he he used to sneak up on me because I would I would be a big like like ah like like that kind of thing, but like the one day he sneaked <laughs> he snuck up on me to try to scare me, and I fucking slapped him right in the face just out of reflex, and I, and I, I was like I feel bad, but like you know like if you if you're going to try to scare me, yeah. I'm not going to like right. run away. I'm going to start swinging at you. Yeah. But whatever this, but being in that room, I did not want to swing at it. I did not yeah. want to like look, like I, I was just like, whatever this thing is, I can't deal with it. I'm out of here. Man. And, and yeah, like, obviously, other people had because they, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's a, that's got to be a little bit validating. At least you, at least other people had 
felt that same thing. Yeah, yeah it, it was. Yeah, and like when I when they walked in and, and like you know Audrey's like you need to have some smokes and like I just like chain smoked, <laughs> and she didn't say anything. I just like chain smoked half her her her, her pack, and like <laughs> and and she you know she's just little little lady and like. She just kind of was just like, "Are you are you okay?" No, I'm like, "Okay, like, we, we can go work." I and mean, she's like, "Okay, we don't you don't have to work in there by yourself, you know." Yeah. And I'm plus, like, All right. we should also say that like nobody's got anything to gain in a situation like that. Like, there's no reason right. for you to make something up like that. And yeah. then why would you make something up like that and then have the balls to go to somebody else and say, "Hey, dude, like this is what happened," you know? Because you're yeah. you know you're you're exposing yourself to the you know. The crazy comments, you know. Yeah, and the ridicule yeah. and all sorts of things. So, yeah, you know, the, the world is 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 a lot weirder than the, just like the surface of it. So, yeah, great stuff, man. Great stuff. Yeah, dude. thanks. Yeah, thanks for coming yeah. on. Um, well, thanks. And while we got you here mm-hmm. um, on the podcast, you recently started your own podcast, uh, yeah. entirely different genre. Yeah. Um, but tell us, tell us what it is and tell us a little about it if you don't mind. Oh yeah. No, thanks. It's uh it's called board in the suburbs and it's kind of an offshoot of my, my thesis work for my, uh, my master of fine arts. Um, I've always been interested in the suburbs and, you know, like the suburbs have this reputation of being very kind of bland and boring, but, um, if you if you kind of like just kind of how you guys are having conversations with people about their weird stories, if you just have like conversations, like there's like interesting things happening in the suburbs, and like even things that aren't meant to be interesting, they're like they're they're like thought provoking. Like where I live, I'll drive around and there's like sidewalks that don't really go anywhere. Like you'll be driving down this road and like there's a stretch of sidewalk, just random stretch of sidewalk, <laughs> and it's like. So, like, I try to find out why that is. Like, does somebody know why there's just this, like, over two-mile stretch of road, there's, like, 50 feet of sidewalk that hey, that doesn't connect to anything? Which reminds me, is it Cincinnati or Cleveland that there's, like, these underground um, tunnels that were built? Cincinnati. Is it Cincinnati. Okay, yeah. so yeah. so it's like... Great Cincinnati subway that they never finished. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like yeah. that kind of stuff that you're talking about? Because people have talked about that, where it's like, you know, they, there's just this weird thing, and you, it's just always been there, and nobody's really ever thought about it, and then... Yeah, this, yeah, and, and, yeah, because, um, yeah, or, um, like, names of, of subdivisions, uh-huh. like... It, like so, I was lucky enough that across the street is a, a subdivision that was built in the late '90s, where like the the cheapest house is like half a million dollars, you know, which is weird. How like if you know Cincinnati, you can have like really um, high end luxury homes right next to like kind of like low end. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, so it's it's called Bridal's Gate. Right, and I'm like, what, what? And luckily, the guy who owns the house next door, his son, like, lived there since like he was born in like the '60s. He's like, oh yeah, he's like, there used to be a horse farm, and and that's the, that that's a horse. That's yeah, and but oh, it's like those gotcha. kind of like stories, yeah, yeah. that like there's that's cool, th- yeah, that's cool. and it, yeah, and it, and it seems like it's kind of like like doesn't really mean anything, but I think if we by examining like the suburbs, we can get a better understanding of our contemporary society because, like, the suburbs are, are a very American thing. Absolutely. Um, any, yes. Anyone I've ever talked to who's from other countries or traveled to other countries, they have suburbs, but not like here. No. The only place that that comes close is Australia. Interesting. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, that, there's a lot. Um, I've been to Australia, and and it's when you go there, there's so many things that are in line with what we do the architecture it's 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 similar in age and yeah you know there's just kind of the way of life it's very similar very similar i think that probably you could and just as a thought aside but you could probably attribute that to both being both of us being uh former english colonies but also also having the area that yes. the real the lit, the actual real, the real estate, estate for people to right you know build out right. and build right. up rather than building up and up and up you know exactly and yeah. and yep so you can that's and that's another thing is like because you know I mean suburbs were 
to get away from this urban area, get away mm-hmm. from the cities, but be yeah. able to drive in. So yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And like, and then how oh, like with the 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 change, like the change of demographics of the suburbs. You know, mm-hmm. like there's a lot of older like white people who like now their neighbors are not white; they're like Hispanic or mm-hmm. you know Asian. And like, yeah, like how and, that changing like, in the suburbs really yeah. is reflecting a changing of our country as a whole. True, a true melting pot. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, that's yeah. fascinating. That's that's, that's, that's really great. cool because you yeah. you've got both local history, but also you've got you know your uh, your just um, uh, anthropological approach, and you know, I mean, you've got all sorts of. You know, society in there and on a yeah. buffet. So. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. and it, and it, and again, it's 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 very conversational, just because it's like I like to talk to people. Yeah. yeah, because if I go in there with a series of questions, like that's why sometimes like the like you listen to it, it seems like it kind of takes a weird twist and turn the conversation. But like I don't prepare any questions. I just like people talking based on what they say. I just follow up. So that's yeah. awesome. Well, everybody, yeah. go check out Board in the Suburbs. Sean's uh Sean's podcast. Yeah. Subscribe. Yeah. Thanks. Definitely gonna subscribe. All right, man. Thanks. Hey Barry. Yeah. Have you ever seen have you ever seen a goat sucker? What? Goat sucker. Chupacabra. Oh yeah. Yeah. Have you ever seen one of those? I haven't seen one personally, but I've heard about them. Yeah, me too. If anybody's got a goat sucking story, wait, if you got a goat sucker story, we want to hear it. If you got a Bigfoot story, we want to hear it. If you got a Loch Ness Monster story, or a Lake Champlain story, or Ogo Pogo story, or uh, an Oingo Boingo story, wait, that, that was an 80s band. Anyway, you got a weird cryptid story, we want to hear it. I didn't even know what a cryptid was, man. Yeah, dude, cryptids. They're like uh, the animals that haven't been necessarily proven by science. They're the ones on the edge. You know, they're not necessarily known animals, but they're known animals. We don't have the bodies or anything like that. So they're kind of like half myth, half story based in reality, but still in that weird mystery area that we don't know about yet. Cryptids are fun. Dude, Sean. Dude, Sean, thank you uh, so much. Those were great stories and just a great chat yeah. to have. Yeah. And our, uh, even our pre chat was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We had a lengthy pre chat that was probably longer than our uh, recorded chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, cool but hey, guy. cool guy. Definitely. Yeah. So thanks for coming on and definitely uh, board in the suburbs. Um, check out that podcast. And everybody, um, you know, thanks for listening. We're going to try to wrap it up real quick here. So thanks for listening. Join us next week. We've got some cool stories from uh, Alaska. Uh, And Angela's got some cool stories, fun stories for us there. It's completely different, but uh, a lot of fun. Yeah. So looking forward to that. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Be safe. Be weird. As always, if you have a weird story, we want to hear it. If you have a lot of them, we want to hear them all. We can't do this podcast without your invaluable contributions. Whether it's sharing your stories, listening, rating, and spreading spreading the the word word about the podcast. podcast. Thanks for listening. Until next time, be safe. Be weird. The stories presented on the What's Your Weird Story podcast are, to our knowledge, true experiences that our guests have had.